Hi, everybody. Carl Kasgard reporting to you from Bomber Command Museum of Canada in Nanton, Alberta. And along with my colleague and uh, buddy Scott Knox at the Rebuild Shop in Arnprior, Ontario, where we're doing all the Halifax bomber restoration. Welcome. We want to give you an update and we're going to try the split screen today show you this uh, little program on our great progress. Uh, we're in the last month of 2021 in December, and uh, we've made good, steady progress. It sure as heck ain't as fast as I want to go, but we're uh, doing great things. Uh, there was the recovery of uh, the Halifax parts this summer, uh, all kinds of advances on Hercules engines for the Halifax. And uh, we've got uh, a ton more propeller parts and hubs for the Halifax. So a lot of good things going on. We'll uh, keep reporting to you every month as, uh, as we progress. So I'll just uh, begin by here in Nanton. And yes, folks, this is not a Halifax. The, the thing is, is the Lancaster here, FM 159 uh, here in Nanton, the tires, wheels and brakes need replacing. And guess what? Halifax 57 rescues coming actually to the rescue. Uh, when we recovered all those Hastings dash Halifax parts from Malta, guess what we found? Four main landing gears inside the wreckage and you see these this brake unit here and this brake unit here right behind my thumb those are Hastings follow me on this they are Hastings Lincoln Shackleton brake units and guess what they fit a Lancaster so Scott and I spent two weekends at the Arn Prior rebuild shop and uh, we took apart the brakes to help save the Lancaster to do the rebuild on wheels, brakes, and tires for the Lancaster. So I hope we get some brownie points for doing that. I'll just show you the brake units. These are universal brake units that fit all the heavy bombers and transports of the 1940s and 50s. This is a Lincoln. Uh, dash Shackleton dash Hastings brake unit. And it's uh, a very critical part of uh, taxiing a bomber and running it. And uh, you can see, you see the air bladder here. That's a, uh, it's air brakes on the Avro aircraft. It's air brakes. And these are the air bladders that expand and the brake shoes are outside. And we got this off of a Lincoln wheel that was donated to us. But here is the fruit of our labors of Scott Knox and company at the rebuild shop in Arnprior. Uh, we wrestled with the little, I can't say the bad words, but we wrestled with this little guy and his brother on the other side of the uh, Hastings wheel that we got from Malta. And you can see this is a really good condition unit considering it's been sitting for 60 years. So uh, all of this will be refurbished and used in the Lancaster. And uh, as I said, brownie points should come to Halifax 57 Rescue for helping out. I've shown you the brakes and what we're going to do now is uh, we'll, we've got another program about propellers. Uh, beautiful parts coming in for the Halifax propellers, but that's another story. So Scott Knox in uh, Arn Prior at your beautiful brand new rebuild shop. Uh, tell everybody about uh, our Trevise and our treasure that we found. Thanks, Carl. Um, yeah, welcome back to Arn Prior. Um, we're loving it here since we moved in in September uh, uh, 2021. It's, it's great. It's a great spot. Um, yeah, a couple of years ago, um, I had purchased some, some aviation bits and pieces from the 
Science and Technology Museum. They were getting rid of some, some pieces that they didn't need anymore. And so I was there to pick up some, uh, some other things I'd purchased. And one of the folks that works there said, are you interested in airplane engines? Uh, yeah, a little bit. And so they took me into one of the warehouses and on top of a fairly high plinth, a very heavy, wide plinth, um, was this uh, cutaway Hercules engine with one cylinder. And so you can just see it in behind me here. It's, um, it's on a little trolley. So this stands, it's hard to see, it may not be in scale, but it stands about, uh, about four feet high. And it has a complete engine cylinder and sleeve valve piston crank um, and all the internal gubbins. When Carl and I were trying to chop it down for uh, ease of movement, inside this plinth that was covered in aluminum sheet, we found a plaque. And it, the engine cutaway wasn't just a regular cutaway. It had been provided by the uh, engine manufacturer to 6th Group Bomber Command. So, and we suspect this would have been done during a formal ceremony. And the plaque also says June 1945. So this probably was given to 6th Group, say, you know, the command on their departure from, from the UK in 1945 or thereabouts. So this is more than what we'd expected. And it was a wonderful little find. The people at the museum had the, had the foresight to attach the plaque to the inside of this mount that it sits on, uh, just in case, right? Because otherwise, without that, we would have lost the provenance. We would not have known where that engine came from. It would just be another cutaway. So it was a real, uh, just a little hidden treasure, a little gem. And, th and this is, I think, one of the things that gives us uh, impetus to move forward is these little, these little things you find. And so the idea is that um, um, anybody who's interested can actually turn the crank and the engine, the sleeve valve will rotate and go up and down. The piston will rotate, uh, go up and down, and you'll see all the, the functionality. What's really cool about the sleeve valve is that there's no poppet valves. There's typical four-stroke engine. You've got little valves that open and close. This doesn't have that. The sleeve actually has ports, and as the port rotates, it opens and closes the intake and exhaust ports, which is, a, in my mind, a phenomenal design. And keep in mind that this would have been done in World War II, and there, all they had was slide rules. So it's, for me, it's, it's an elegant piece of engineering. Um, anyhow, we'll be shipping it back to Nanton so that the folks at the museum can, uh, can get more information and understand about the intricacies and the engineering of a sleeve valve engine. Thanks, Carl. Well, back over to you. Sure. Okay, Scott. And uh, can uh, just before um, uh, we finish off here, I think I would interject and ask you, what would you say it, are the next major steps in the two wing center section wing sections that you're going to meet? Uh, didn't we talk something about possibly doing the floor and the trailing edge of the center section first? Can you just okay, give us a little rundown on that before we sign off? Sure, just quickly. Um, so you can see behind me the wing, the wing sections. So th this piece here, this is the port side. We're starting to put these stiffeners in place for skinning, which should be happen pretty soon. Just in behind this wing, through the ribs, you can see the starboard side that's already been completed. So we're still debating, but... What we'll probably do is join both sides. So each section is 15 feet, join them together, at least temporarily, and then put the floor in. So between the port and starboard section, there was a, the roof of the bomb bay or the floor of the crew area. Of, and, and so we're gonna put that floor in. Um, it's a fairly intricate um, assembly. It's got dozens and dozens of parts. And, uh, and it, but it, even though it, it's made of so many parts, it's extremely strong and um, to hold the load of, of all the bombs. And so it's, it's going to take some time. Um, that and also the leading edge and trailing edge um, will be happening 
either in parallel with or maybe before or after. We don't know exactly. But those are the three main thrusts coming in the future. Floor, um, uh, leading edge, and trailing edge. So this, here we are. This is this is today's status. And we're getting these these cross members in there. That's that's our current goal. Thanks, Carl. Great, Scott. That's that fills us in, and uh, certainly it'll. Um, uh, you guys have got your work cut out for you, and uh, uh, the rest of our team will be going out there in the summer of 2022 to recover even more parts for you. We're we're doing all this, folks. Uh, you can see Scott Knox. Uh, he's and his team. They need funding just for raw parts. Uh, they they need all kinds of stuff to continue their reconstruction. Uh, you know that we spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars on the recovery uh, off the coast of Sweden. We're continuing. We got two more weeks planned. We'll show that to you in the near future. But all of you stalwarts, all you guys that have been uh, donating to us, bless you. All of you that. Uh, think that the Halifax is an important aircraft to the history of aviation and to Canada and to your freedom, then we hope that you will support us, that you will send in your donations. We've got lots of goodies for you for uh, if you donate. And uh, we just want you to know that we're dedicated to this. And how can I explain the importance of the Halifax quickly? Okay. On every city block, in every town, in every province from coast to coast is somebody who's got a family member that flew in the Royal Canadian Air Force and or flew Halifaxes. So let's uh, keep rolling. Let's keep going. Uh, we're going to save all the treasure we can, save all the history, but we need your donations. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good uh, Christmas season, and we'll see you in the new year with the Rebuild Shop, knowing we leave no Halifax behind. Thanks, Scott, and we'll see you soon.